All right, so you, your, your, your practical experience opening doors suggests that, uh, what is the, the lowest one was E, O oh, other. <laughs> suggests that A is the best way to do it. Uh, almost all of you know that, that if I want to open this door, it's hinged on the right. It's easiest for me to open it if I, put, if I push far from the hinge. So R is big, R is the vector from the point of, from the axis of rotation out to where the force is applied. I want to apply the force as far away as I can. Applying it like this, well, I can open it like that, barely, but it isn't the wise thing to do. I need a lot more force because R got really small. I applied the force too close to the axis of rotation. So that's what's the problem with G. G has the force closer, the same force as A, but closer to the axis of rotation, in fact about half the distance. So this R here in the torque equation is about half as much. You get half the torque if you apply it half as far. What about H? H is pushing right at the hinge. Nobody over the age of three, I think, would push at the hinge in order to open the door once you recognize where the hinge is. Uh, it could be hidden somehow. You could push on the wrong side. But why does H not work? H is a perfectly fine force. But R is the distance from the hinge to the force. And H is applied right at the hinge, so R is zero, so the torque is zero. For H, the torque is zero because R is zero. What about E? Also, a, a, a method that, that most of you would not use to open a door is to push straight at the hinge, which is what E is doing there. E is pushing straight at the hinge. It's doing it far away, so R is actually bigger than for A. The R vector for E is all the way out to the end of the door. So R is big, the force is big, but sine of theta, R is out to the right or up here and to the right, and F is down and to the left. So they are opposite to each other. R and F are opposite to each other in this, uh, this middle picture. In other words, theta is 180 degrees or pi and sine of pi is zero, so no torque. If I push directly downward at the point of the axis of rotation, then I don't rotate this thing. If I push downward over to the left of the axis of rotation, then I can rotate it. If I push downward to the right of the axis of rotation, then I can rotate it. But if I push straight downward, I'm not going to rotate it either way. Has, has everyone had a chance to, all right. So with the same mass, uh, how do you make the rotational inertia large? What's your guess from, from one of them has a, is hard to rotate. Why is that? Where is the mass? far from the axis of rotation. If you move the mass far from the axis of rotation, it will be harder to rotate that thing. What happens when an animal runs? Well, their leg has to rotate. They, they have muscles that rotate their leg at the hip joint. I have to do this to walk or to run. And so if you're going to do that quickly, if you're going to change your rotational, the rotational inertia of your leg really fast, what does that tell you about where the mass ought to be? Where should the, ma the big muscles ought to be? Should they be down in your feet? Then, you, then you're trying to, then the rotational inertia is gigantic. Because, I mean, just put on big heavy boots and, and you'll see. Um, so, so uh, a gazelle or something ought to have almost no mass in their feet in order to be able to rotate quickly. 
you know, tiny little, tiny little feet and, and like horses do, and uh, gigantic muscles somewhere else, somewhere closer to the axis of rotation. Well, maybe we talked about this, but maybe we didn't finish it, I don't even know. Um, same pictures, which torque is equal to zero? Choose the best answer you can. 